Let's take a look at the special right triangles. Uh, I will a lot of times call these just the special triangles for short, but these are right triangles that have nice characteristics that allow us to find the ratio of sides and the angles using exact values. So we've used sine, cosine, tangent in the reciprocal functions now to find uh, a given side or a given angle, given that we know some of their information about the right triangle. But we see a lot of times we have to use our calculator and that ended up with a uh, irrational number, uh, an infinite decimal that it's a correct answer, but it's just not incredibly clean. So these special right triangles are going to help us solve for really clean angles and sides. Uh, there are only a couple cases that we're going to see what those cases are. I should note too that these are the same values in the unit circle. And so our book actually chooses just to, dis to discuss the unit circle first, and that's why I moved a little out of order of the book, uh, because the unit circle really comes about through these special triangle values, not the other way around. The first triangle I want to start with is the 45. 45, 90 right triangle. So when I say 45, 45, 90, those are talking about degrees. Uh, obviously, if we're going to deal with right triangles, we have to have at least one of the angles being 90 degrees. Let me try and draw that a little bit better proportionally. These should be the same size. And that's the key to that this triangle. That's why we know exactly what these ratios are going to be. If these two angles are both 45, that means that this is isosceles triangle, meaning that two of the sides are the same because the two angles are the same. So let me just, for argument's sake, give this side a length of one, which means this other side has to have a length of one. Well, the reason I can find this third side exactly is because I can use the Pythagorean theorem, because by setting one side to be one, I know the angles are the same, the two sides have to be the same, the second side has to be one, and then to find, I'll uh, we'll call it the hypotenuse h, we would take h squared equals to one squared, plus 1 squared, so h squared would be equal to 2, and h is equal to the square root of 2. So we know exactly how those ratios work. Now, the reason these are useful is now that I have this relationship between uh, the sides and the angles for this, this triangle, I can find sine, cosine, tangent, and their reciprocal functions exactly. So let's take sine of 45 degrees. Well, given the triangle that I've just drawn, I know that sine is the opposite over the adjacent, so I get 1 over root 2. I do need to rationalize that. I do want to rationalize all my uh, unit circle values, or the special triangle values, so I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. When I do that, I get root 2 over 2. And those of you that have already seen the unit circle, that may look familiar. Uh, we'll, we'll see those again. Now, I kind of arbitrarily chose that 1 at the start. So how do I know that sine of 45 is always going to be equal to this root 2 over 2? What if the sides had been different? I just I chose it to be a 1, but what if it's instead, say, a 5? Well, this would mean this side would be a 5, and we need to figure out that hypotenuse again. So I'm going to come over here. h squared is equal to 5 squared plus 5 squared. Well, 5 squared is 25, and 25 plus 25 is 50. So our h squared would be equal to 50, and h would be equal to the square root of 50. We can simplify that. That is 5 square roots of 2. So we see that square root of 2 appear again. Let me take the sine of 45 using these blue values, and we'll see what we get. So sine of 45 would be equal to the opposite, the 5. And the hypotenuse is 5 root 2. Well, right away we see the fives cancel, and we're right back to where we were a second ago. We're going to get the root 2 over 2. Was that just a lucky coincidence that it ended up being the same thing? No, because we scale everything up by a factor of 5. We're not changing the triangle. It's the same way as if I come over here and I zoom in and out on that triangle. It's not changing the proportionality of it. The proportionality is staying the same. It's just changing what these numbers are. But what does the sine, cosine, or tangent do? It relates those proportions. So by relating the, the proportions, we cancel out those scaling up or scaling down factors, whatever they might be. And that's why we're always going to get at sine of 45 to be root 2 over 2. It doesn't matter what the initial sides are. Let's take a, another example, or let's just use another trig function. Let's take cosine of 45 degrees. Well, cosine is the adjacent, so if I look at 45, doesn't matter which perspective, because they're both the same. My adjacent is 1, my hypotenuse is 2, so we get 1 over root 2, and we saw how to rationalize that a second ago, it's root 2 over 2. 
And if I look at the last one, the tangent, uh, just clean that up real quick. If I look at tangent of 45 degrees, I would have the opposite, which is the, sorry, one, and the adjacent is the one, so we have one over one, which is just one. So that is why this triangle is so nice. The 45, 45, we get these exact ratios every single time. If we were to put it in the calculator, we can do that, right? Can type sine 45 into the calculator. I'm just gonna see that we get a really messy decimal, and now we can list that value exactly. And we do wanna do that moving forward. Anytime we can write down exact values, we wanna write down exact values. So anytime we see a 45 or an angle based on a reference angle of 45, we can find their exact values. Uh, I should note that we've been using degrees, but I could have also used radians. Radians are pi over four, pi over four, and pi over two. So call it 45, 45, 90, right triangle just for efficiency, but we could have just easily called it pi over four, pi over four, pi over two, right triangle. So that's one of our uh, special triangles. The other one I want to look at, uh, let me, I'm going to work my way there actually. Let me start by looking at another nice triangle, which is an equilateral triangle. If I think about an equilateral triangle, the definition of an equilateral triangle is a triangle where all the sides are the same length. And arbitrarily, I'm just going to choose two for right now, since all the two sides are of, of two. Uh, why did I do that? Well, it's going to work out cleanly in just a minute. I could have chosen whatever, but I, I chose two. And it doesn't matter because what we saw in the last one, it's that scaling up, scaling down number. It's going to give me the same ratios regardless. What am I do next is I'm going to cut this triangle in half. Because right now I don't have a right triangle. Let, let's talk about that before I move forward. Right now, the other thing I know, each of these angles has to be 60 degrees. I know that there are 180 total degrees in a triangle, so divide that by three. Each angle is 60 degrees. They're all the same. It's equilateral. Now let's cut this triangle in half because I really do want to have a right triangle. Uh, equilateral triangle is pretty easy to discuss. Everything's the same. If I drop that vertical in there, that has to give me a pair of right triangles. These two triangles are the same. The important thing about dropping that vertical in there is because I knew this initial side was two and all the sides are the same length, by dropping the vertical, it breaks this side up exactly halfway each way. So this side, the smaller piece now has to be a one, and this angle right here has to be 30 degrees. And so if I look at just that triangle that I've created, I have a 30 degree angle, I have a 90 degree angle, and I have a 60 degree angle that was from the initial triangle. We had initially set the side of two, so the hypotenuse is still two. We haven't cut that in any way. We haven't reduced that in any way. This side down here, where that has to be one. And so then we'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that third side. Well, we're gonna have two squared is equal to, I'll call it uh, y squared, uh, the unknown. So we'll have one squared plus y squared. And so we'll have four equals one plus y, meaning y squared, meaning y squared is equal to three. And so y is equal to the square root of three. And just like we did a second ago, I can now define sine and cosine. For both of these angles, we actually get two sets of angles in this triangle. So let me look at sine of 30. Sine of 30, the opposite is the one. The hypotenuse is the two. Cosine of 30, the adjacent is a thing that we just found, that root three. So we get root three over two. Then tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent. So we would get the one over the root three, which we can rationalize by multiplying root three over root three. And we get root three over three. And so that gives us another set of exact values. I'm gonna leave it to you to work out the, the values of 60. It's just that easy. We're just looking at the triangle we've created. But the key is every single time we see a 30, 60, or a 45 degree angle, we now know that they're based on these special triangles. Same way I did on the last one, we said this is a 30, 60, 90, right, triangle, but I could have also defined it in terms of its radians, pi over six, pi over three, pi over two. So anytime we see 30, 60, 45, pi over six, pi over three, or pi over four, those are exact valued uh, problems that we can solve using our special triangles or the unit circle, how we'll tie it together later.